Yo, Elliot, quick question. I just read The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, and I'm wondering if resistance is a demon. Like what Father Ripperger talks about in his Spiritual Warfare series. I'm happy you guys are listening to that. Also, how do I decipher the difference between resistance that is pointing me to true north, as Stephen calls it, versus resistance that's showing me not to pursue a particular thing any insight on this would be greatly appreciated. Okay, let, there's a bunch of questions here. Let's go back to the first one. Is resistance a demon? Now, one of the things that we got to avoid is calling everything a demon, right? And I know like even when I started understanding spiritual warfare and demon stuff, I was even like saying demon, 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 right? Because it was new to me. It was exciting. But I learned a lot of this by reading... Uh, St. Ignatius Brianishov. He's an Orthodox saint, right? So I, I know I'm a little weird. Um, but I like the Orthodox traditions, many of them. And, and, and Brianishov, and the Orthodox is actually what brought me back to the faith anyway. Brianishov was one of the first that I started reading. And he, he mentions that there, and I'm sure there are others, he's not the only one, but this is where I heard it. There, there are three forms of resistance. There are three forms of resistance. It's not always demonic. It's not always demonic. And, and, and Father Ripperger also says this too. That's why they have a process. If you're listening to the Spiritual Warfare series, there's a process that they go through before you go to an exorcist. You don't just go to the exorcist. Because a lot of people think, oh, I have, I have demonic oppression. It's like, no, you're just lazy. So he's like, you got to go through these processes. And some of the process includes praying three times a day, right? I think he says do the Angelus three times a day, get into a state of, of grace, stop sinning. They're like a thing, some things you just got to clean up before he actually will say, okay, mm, it's a demon, and then we'll see you as an exorcist. There are three things that it more than likely is, and I'll say demon last. It can be your fallen nature. Resistance comes to our fallen nature or what St. Thomas Aquinas calls concupiscence. Ripperger uses that term a lot too. Ripperger, somebody keeps correcting me. He uses that term too. Concupiscence. Another way to, or, or a way to see the fruits or describe the fruits of concupiscence is effeminacy. So you may just be being effeminate. Yeah, you, you're being lazy. Effeminacy is a resistance to doing what's arduous with a disordered attachment to pleasure, right? That is very simple. That could very simply be a part of our fallen nature, right? It's a, just a part of your, it's just a part of your nature, right? That I would rather just sleep in. I would rather just play video games. I would rather just do something comfortable than do this hard thing, right? That's not a demon. <laughs> That's you. As you, that's your concupiscence, that's your effeminacy, that's your addictive fallen nature, right? You have to own that. And so you got to work through that. Number two, he says the world. He says the fallen world is a distraction, meaning it could be your friends keep calling you when you need to go do something, right? You keep getting distracted by your cell phone. There's, there's uh, notifications. Or your, you know, your wife is cooking something in the kitchen. Oh, you smell it and you start dreaming about you know, the muffins she's cooking or something like that. Because I think I smell my wife cooking something. Whatever it is, right? So there's things in the world that distract you. Even women, right? Like you just start daydreaming of you you're trying to work here at a coffee shop and there's this pretty girl that walks by and you ever get into the, one of these like hypnotic trances I, when i was much younger i remember where i'd be like i'm doing something and it's like this girl walks by and it's like oh man oh man oh oh i can't stop looking at her oh man and then i'm trying to go back <laughs> trying to go back to what i'm doing and i'm like thinking about her I'm like, oh man she's so hot right that's distraction in the world it's a part of our fallen nature right? That you're being drawn, you know, sexually, you're lusting over this person, but it's, it's also a distraction in the world. That's why, you know, we we're talking about Muslims before, and I, I kind of get it why they dress their women, you know, from top to bottom in all black. It's like, so they stop distracting guys. And if dudes weren't so distracted, they would live much more righteous lives. But these women walk around half naked, so it's like, damn, I can't, I can't focus. <laughs> so, 
And then thirdly, thirdly is it could be a demon. And it's probably the least of the three. So when it comes to Stephen Pressfield and his book, and I don't know if he's, I don't know what, if he's speaking from a secular standpoint or if he's uh, Christian, Catholic, I don't know. I have no idea. But he uses resistance as a term to describe all of those things. It could be any of those things, right? And, and he personifies it, which is beautiful. He does personify it and either one of those things can be personified, right? Satan wants to see you fail. Satan lurks and works in many different ways. Satan can work with your lower nature through your imagination. I think I remember uh, Father Ripperger saying that too. He says that demons can't uh, affect your emotions, but they can play with your imagination, and I've seen that happen to me in my life. And I, don't, I can't say if it's a demon or not. But there are times where like, I, I realize, oh, my imagination is getting the best of me right now. Either in a good way or a bad way. When I say good way, meaning in a distracting way, right? I'm daydreaming about what could be. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on. So, and it's a beautiful book. I love the book, Art of uh, War of Art. He personifies it and he gives personality to this resistance. And that's fair. He says, also, how do I decipher the difference between resistance that's pointing me true north versus resistance that's showing me not to pursue a particular thing? I will share this with you. It's, a new, it's new. If you've been here long enough or you're, you're making your way through the program, you'll hear me say a lot of different things with regard to this. You may even heard me say things today. I don't always have the same answer because I can come from different angles with things. And there's, there's this beautiful piece that I heard Rush V say, right? Rush V. I don't really follow him, but I like him, uh, particularly because he, he repented, right? He was one of these guys who like pick up artist guys, very clever, wrote a lot of books. I wasn't into him then, but then when some, somebody put me on to him when he became Christ, Orthodox Christian, I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. For a guy to have a, a, a change of heart like that, let me look into him. So I started, you know, I started following him. And like I say, I, I don't read everything he puts out, but he had a, I follow him on Telegram. He had a Telegram that went out the other day, a couple months ago. And he answered this question by saying, I always use this litmus test. He says, if this thing is meant to glorify me, I know that it is not my true north, like you say, right? It's showing you not to pursue. If, I'm, if there's just something that I'm working with and I'm struggling and I ask myself, does this glorify me? That means, okay, maybe not. Or does it glorify the Lord? He says, okay, then, right? Because remember I said earlier that if you take, God says, if you take care of my things, I'll take care of yours. And so it's been, it's been so humbling for me and it's been so helpful for me. It's been mind-blowing for me to realize that as long as I'm doing it for the Lord, I'm in the right, regardless of what happens. I don't, I don't gauge myself on worldly results anymore. I used to. It's a little easier for me to say that because I got a lot of worldly results right now, right? So <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if I could have been this way you know, 10 years ago. But as I'm coming to wisdom and understanding... I have to ask myself, does this glorify the Lord? Is, is this in some way, shape, or form glorifying the Lord? And even if there's resistance, especially if there's resistance, I have to be a little bit more open to it. And then I also have to be honest with myself. Am I just trying to glorify myself, right? Am I worried about my reputation? Am I worried about what people think about me? Am I worried about how much money I'm going to make? Am I worried, am I worried about all these things that are pure of my, of my own selfish ego? Well, then I have to, then I back off a little bit and I say, okay, because it doesn't mean that, that because it glorifies me, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It doesn't mean that it's wrong, but it means that I'm too attached to it. You see, because I also recognize that God will, God will use somebody by putting them on a pedestal for the world, which glorifies that person so that God can shine through them so that God can be glorified through that person. So you don't want to be fake humble, meaning, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything or I'm not, going to, I'm not going to give myself, I'm not going to step into the, into the limelight because, well, that's ego. Well, no, no, no. 
th- even in the in in the gospel or, or or one of Paul's letters, I think he says something like, um, "Nobody lights a candle and puts it under a basket." What he meant by that was like, "Hey, if you got a light, you got to shine that light. You got to shine that light up, dude. You got to show people, right? You got to put that light out there so people can see it. Oh, wow, that's beautiful." But you don't have a light and then you hide it, put it under the table, right? So, but is it glorifying the Lord or is it glorifying myself? Let's see. How do I know if the resistance that's pointing, it's pointing me to true north. Now, resistance that's pointing you to the true north, like you were saying before, that comes from, or like I was saying before, let me back up for a moment in this whole true north thing too. Let me go there with that. We get kind of, we get kind of caught up and distracted, confused, and attached to these true north things, right? And even like when I, when you guys begin this program, I ask you to write out your soul goals, right? And what do we do before we write our soul goals? We humble ourselves, fast and pray. This is my advice to you guys when you join the program. I say, hey, look, before we start talking about what your goal is, what you're doing, right, what your true north is, you've got to humble yourself, right? That's the whole point of that initiation when you come into this program. Does it always work? Is it 100%? No, but it's a form. Humble, and you might want to even do this, right? You might want to humble yourself to find out if it's your true north. Robert Barron says, that we can either be in the ego drama or the theo drama. Ego drama is my true north, how I'm going to make my life and what I'm going to be and me, 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 ego drama. He says the theo drama is where is God calling me to go? Where, where do I fit in God's picture? What is, God's, what is God's grand drama and how do I fit into it for him? One requires, I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. I got to will this. I got to do this, right? And you may be getting resistance because, bro, you, you, why are you trying to do it? Why are you trying to do it? Why not allow it? Say, God carry me, guide me, be a light unto my feet, remove all sense of anxiety or, or um, wanting to rush, right? Take away from me this, this willfulness that I have. And I tell you because I, I struggle, I struggle just like you guys struggle. I have to ask God constantly, get me out of the way, Lord, please, Get me out of the way. And so when it comes to that true north, I don't think it's one of these things that we choose. You've heard me say this before. I don't think it's one of these things that we say, aha, my true north. And you know what people want? They want, I know exactly how I'm going to get there. A, B, C, D, E. And when I get there, this is what it's going to look like. That's pure ego drama. <laughs> That's pure imaginations. And like I said, the demons could play your imagination. That's pure imagination, bro. Playing with yourself. Rather, look at what's in front of you. What needs to be done? What's in front of you that's not being done? What do you have on your plate that you haven't fully chewed yet? What have, what, did you, what have you left undone? What have you only done halfway? What could you do a little bit more for that you have right now? I tell you, I struggle. I struggle. I don't speak to you guys like a guru. I speak to you like a big brother. I speak to you like, hey, look, I'm doing the same thing you're doing, trying to figure it out. I have been dealing with this desire of mine. I think it's my desire, but it's also like, but I know God is calling me, but I, I can't decipher. And so last night I spent an hour in adoration. I went to the church and I prayed in front of the body of Christ. And I listened. This is what I did. I went and I listened. I was like, God, you already know what my questions are. You already know. And for me, it becomes as it is for most of us, practical things. Do I start a new YouTube channel, right? Or do I keep doing the same thing I'm doing? And then 
And, you know, there's a part of it. That's a part of it, right? Like, God, do you want, what, how do you want me to continue to evangelize, right? Like, I love, I love that. I want, to, I want to evangelize. But I'm getting in my own way. And essentially what I heard God say to me, Elliot, stop. Stop. You're overthinking this. Just keep doing what you're doing, being who you're being. You don't need to do anything grand. Right? This, was, this was the message that came to me. Right? This is what was revealed to me last night. Stop. Slow down. You don't have to do anything grand. You're on the way. Just do what you're doing a little better, a little more. Tighten up the loose ends. Where can you do what you're already doing a little bit better? And so the same thing comes to you with true north. You know what your true north is? Look at, this is how you know your true north. Look down at your feet and see where they're pointing. What does that mean? What do you have in front of you? What am I doing right now? Right? And this, this is why the answer was so simple to me. Because it's like, what am, I, what am I actually doing? Well, I am actually doing what I'm beating my head over trying to do. Right? And how am I doing it? I'm not. I'm not doing anything. But my ego wants to do stuff. <laughs> my ego wants to do stuff. Let's go do something. Right? That's part of my concupiscence, fallen nature. But God is like, stop it. Stop it. You're doing it. Just keep being. Keep being, E. That was the message I got from me. And so the true north, all I had, if I wanted to know my true north, all I had to do was look, 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 look. Look what you got. Look what you're doing. Can you do that? Can you keep doing that? Can you commit to that? Can you do it a little bit better? Can you do it for me instead of for you? Oh, oh, hmm, yeah. Simple. It's almost too simple. <laughs> it's too simple sometimes. I get it. I know it's too simple because I want complicated stuff. I want complicated stuff. I want to, because ego, I want to feel like I'm doing something, forgetting that I'm doing it. I want, I want to do something else. <laughs> That's ADD too. I got a little bit of that going on as well. I've had to be very cautious as an adult with, with you know, I recognize my nature, right? I want to find a new true north. And there's no such thing, bro. Slow down. So anyway, so that's a little bit of insight for you. You say you want some insight? That's my insight on that, dude. I hope that helps. You said it too in that comment. Got to stay vigilant. That's it. Stay vigilant, dude. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.